Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be setting up our animator for our player. This is the first episode of animating our player and the next episode we're going to apply all the animations with scripts. This shouldn't be too hard, it's mostly just logic. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a new folder and call it animator. And then I'm going to create a new animator controller. I'm gonna call this one player animator. If you double click it, you'll open it in a new window. You can drag this window wherever you want. I like to have it instead of my scene view. So if we go to our FBX folder, we have our animations. I'm going to start off with the idle animation. I'm just going to drag it in here. I'm also going to drag my walk animation in here. And you can see that our idle knife animation is orange and this one is gray. That means that this one is the default animation and it will get played automatically. I'll just go to my FPS arms and you can see that we have a controller under animator. So I'll just drag my player animator onto that. And now if we play, you can see that our idle animation gets played, but it stopped because if we go to our FBX folder and select our idle animation, you can see that loop time is not checked. If you check loop time and now play it, you can see that our animation plays over and over again. But now if we move or jump or anything, our animation stays the same. We can change this using transitions and parameters. I'll right click to my idle animation, make it transition to walk animation, and then from the walk animation to the idle animation. We can use parameters to change animations. So if you go up here in the left corner, you will see layers and parameters. List is empty, so we have to create a new one. I'll just go here and create a new integer. I'm gonna call this one condition. It's just a normal condition. You can call it anything you want. And the condition by default is zero. And once we change it to one using the scripts, we want to change to walking animation. So we can go and select this transition from the idle to the walk animation. And then go in our inspector, go to conditions and add a new condition and say condition equals to one. Basically what this means, it means that we're going to change to our walk animation if the condition equals one. We'll go to our transition from walk to idle animation and we'll add a new condition and say condition is not equal to one. So if the condition here equals to one, then we'll walk and if it's not one, then we'll just go back here to the idle animation. If we play this, and change the condition to one, you can see that it changes to the walking anim animation. Again, it's not looping, so we have to go back to our walk animation and check loop time and apply that. Play it again now, and you can see that my condition is already set to one. Start playing. A small problem that we have now, if we change to one, you can see that it doesn't start walking immediately. That's because if you go to your transition, has exit time is checked. Basically what this means, it means that it's going to finish up this animation before moving on to this one. You want to uncheck that and also go to the other transition and I uncheck that. Now if we play, everything is smooth and we can change back and forth. In the next episode, we're just going to change the condition based on our movement. We will not have any animation playing when we're walking sideways because when we're walking sideways I just want the player to be able to aim and I will not play any, any animation then. And when we move backwards it will also play the walking animation and it kind of does look like you're moving backwards and I just fell off. But if you want to, you can go and create another animation in Blender for walking backwards. I will just use this, the same one. 
Next, I will create a jumping animation. This should be pretty simple. I will drag my jump animation here and I will create a transition from idle to jump and from jump to idle. First, I will set this up. Now, there's a really cool thing here that we can use. We can use triggers. If you go to parameters and add a new trigger, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call this one jump trigger. Basically, what trigger does once we trigger the trigger, of course, it's going to play this animation once and then go back, which is exactly what we need. I'll go to the transition from idle to jump and then I will add a new condition and I will call this one jump trigger. I will also uncheck has exit time. Now we'll go to my second transition from jump to idle and I will not add anything because this is going to get triggered. It's going to play the animation and once it plays the animation, it's going to go back. That's because we haven't unchecked has exit time and now we will play the animation to the end and then go back to the other animation. Make sure the condition is zero because we cannot transition from walk to jump yet. And now if I trigger it, it's going to play it once, it's going to come back. Now we're going to change a small thing here because I've done this before and I know we have to set the jump animation speed to two. You can do that by going to your animation right here and then changing speed to two. That's because when we jump, we immediately move up and the animation is a bit slow. So we'll just go here and trigger and you can see that it's much faster now. And I think that will work perfectly. Now we also want to be able to transition from walk to jump. So I'll just create a new transition from walk to jump and from jump to walk. And again, same thing. I will uncheck has exit time, add a new condition and then condition will be jump trigger. And when we go back, I don't want to change anything. This is fine. Now we can even transition from walking to jump and jump and it comes back to walking. Now there's a small thing we can do here to help this out. If you take a closer look, whenever we jump from the walking animation, it first goes to the idle animation and then it changes to walk. Just take a closer look. So we jump, it goes back to idle and then back to walk. You can see that goes here, here. Now we can add a new condition to the jump to walk transition. We can just go condition and say, go back to walking if the condition equals to one. And in, in this transition from jump to idle, we can add a new condition and say, go back to idle if the condition equals to zero jump and it goes straight back to walking and that you can see that's much smoother. Hopefully this all makes sense. I mean, it's pretty simple. And then I will add my sprint animation. I will just drag it in here. We want to be able to transition to sprinting from walking and from idle. First, I'm going to go from idle, make a transition. We want to transition from idle to sprint whenever we set the condition to be equal to two. So zero is idle, one is walking and two is sprinting. I will uncheck has exit time and we want to transition to idle knife whenever the condition equals to zero. I will also uncheck has exit time. And now if we go first set the condition to two, uh, to zero actually, and then to two, and you can see that it transitions very nicely. Again, it doesn't loop, so we have to go back here to our animation and check loop time and apply that. I also want transition from walk to sprint, so create some transitions. I will transition whenever condition equals to two again, and also uncheck has exit time. And I will again transition whenever condition equals to one. So whenever condition equals to two, I go sprinting, and whenever equals to one, I go walking. If we start walking, we can change the sprint and it's very smooth. I will also add a attack animation. I will drag it in here. And same thing as for the jump trigger, I'm just going to create a new trigger, call it attack trigger. And then I want to be able to transition 
to attack from idle, walking and sprinting. First I will go from idle, so just create some transitions. And I want to transition to attacking whenever we trigger the attack trigger. I will uncheck has exit time and here I will leave has exit time checked and add a condition if condition equals to zero. So I will go to attack and then I will return to idle if condition equals to zero. Condition is equal to zero. If I attack, we play the animation and go back. Same thing as for the jump, I will just make this play a bit faster. So I'll set the speed to two. Now I want transition from walking to attack. I'll make some transition he transitions here. And same thing, I want to transition to attack whenever we trigger the trigger. Uncheck has exit time and here, leave has exit time checked and add a new condition. We want to go back to walking if condition equals to one. And while we're here, I will just create the sprint transitions i will i will start attacking whenever we trigger the trigger uncheck has exit time and here i will go back whenever the condition equals to two so we're idle if i attack you can see that it works set the condition to one attack comes back to walking sprint attack comes back to sprinting. You can see that everything works as we expected. Now we can add on to this whenever we want to. This is just the basic, uh, it's just the start. And this is only for knife. If we have a pistol or something, we can add more animations, but I'm gonna show you how to do that in future episodes. For this time, that's it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, go follow me on Patreon, or even support me on there. So, Hopefully enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.